Chem activity number 26 in the corresponding videos, we're going to explore molecular geometry. And the idea is that we're going to use Lewis structures to help us derive the electronic and molecular geometries. This is a very important approach to understanding the three-dimensional nature of molecules and being able to predict other properties. So the principle is based on what's called the Vesper theory, which is a theory that was proposed by Donald Gillespie from McMaster University. Vesper theory stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. It's the idea that electron pairs will arrange themselves about a central atom so as to minimize repulsion. And these electron pairs can be bonding pairs or lone pairs. Another useful concept is this idea of steric number which is the number of regions of electron density about a central atom. And that can either be lone pair electron regions or bond regions. So we say the steric number is equal to the number of lone pair electrons as well as the number of bonds. And those bonds can either be single, double, or triple, as we shall see. Now, I will fine-tune this definition as we go along, but you need a little bit more background theory before we can do that. So to start off, let's look at the first set of structures that are found in teaching model number one. Now these are examples of steric number equal to two and steric number equal to three. So carbon dioxide is an example of a steric number equal to two. This is the idea that you have the central atom and it's surrounded by two bonds. Again, they can either be single, double, or triple bonds. And therefore, Whatever we come up with for carbon dioxide will apply to any molecule that has a steric number equal to 2. These two structures here both have steric number equal to 3. The idea is that you have a central atom, so boron for example, and it's surrounded by three single bonds, so that would be steric number equal to 3. In the case of sulfur dioxide, we've got a sulfur, and then it's surrounded by two double bonds, and then one lone pair of electrons. So again, that's an example of steric number equal to 3. So to help you see how knowing the Lewis structure can help us with the geometry in combination with Vesper theory, I'm going to show you a bit of a simulation that comes from the FET simulations. So here we have a molecular structure, and this is meant to represent something like carbon dioxide with a steric number equal to 2. In these simulations, we can look at the geometries, but we can also put the labels in. So for instance, I'm going to click here. It tells me the molecular geometry is equal to linear. Electronic geometry is equal to linear. I'm also going to show bond angles to emphasize that the bond angle here is 180 degrees. And I'm going to switch out the single bonds for double bonds because that's more consistent with what we saw with carbon dioxide. So let me just do that. And you can see that the same geometry is adopted whether or not this is single or double bonds. So that's why we say steric number is equal to the number of lone pair electrons as well as the number of bonds, whether they be single, double, or triple. Vesper theory says that these electron pairs and these electron pairs will adopt a geometry so as to minimize repulsion. So right now they're adopting a geometry of 180 degrees relative to one another. If I try to bring the electron pairs closer together, you can see that adjustments is made until once again we have a linear structure. So Vesper theory would predict this sort of linear structure. And indeed, carbon dioxide has this linear structure. If we transform this back to single bonds, and I'm going to put again molecular geometry, electronic geometry, and show bond angle. And what I'm going to do is add one additional single bond. Now we have the example of boron trichloride. So it's the idea that we have a steric number equal to 3. We have three single bonds attached to that boron. And you can see that it adopts this 120 bond angle. If I try to bring the electron pairs closer to one another, again, the geometry is adopted such that it looks like this. Now you'll notice that this is not a linear geometry. So for instance, back here, when we simply look at this situation with 180 degrees, both the molecular and the electronic geometries are referred to as linear. I add this extra bond, and in order to minimize repulsion, these electron pairs are adopting what we refer to as a trigonal planar geometry. All these bond angles are 120 degrees. It's trigonal in the sense that this will look something like a triangle and planar in that all the bonds are on the same plane. And correspondingly, all the atoms are on the same plane. Now, note, you can always come back to the simulation if you're having trouble 
visualizing these sorts of things. But hopefully in time, when you draw it on paper, you'll be able to see how this works. Now, in the case of the sulfur dioxide, I'm going to, for instance, remove one of the bonds, and I'm going to put in a lone pair. And as you know, these are actually double bonds, so how about we make it more realistic? So we'll put these in, and then I'll remove the extra single bonds. So this is more like the sulfur dioxide. And again, it doesn't really matter if these are double or single bonds. The same effect will be true. So we've got the lone pair of electrons now occupying a region of electron density. And you'll notice in terms of the naming here, the electronic geometry is still trigonal planar in that this region of electron density, this region of electron density, and the lone pair region of electron density arrange themselves so as to minimize repulsion between one another. And that's still an electronic geometry of trigonal planar. However, we refer to this geometry in terms of molecular geometry as bent. And the idea here is that we simply focus on the position of the sulfur, oxygen, oxygen atoms. So for instance, if I remove lone pairs, now I know that the lone pairs are having an effect. That's why there is this bent geometry for the sulfur, oxygen, oxygen atoms. The lone pairs are having an effect. But in terms of talking about that geometry, we don't refer to the lone pairs. So this geometry would simply be bent. We can see that when we put the lone pairs back in, then you can see the electronic geometry as being trigonal planar. There's one other aspect that I should mention, although it's not reflected in the number right here. As it turns out, the lone pair electrons spread themselves out more, if you will, than the bonding pairs. And therefore, they're going to repel the bonding pairs more. So actually, in reality, the bond angle between oxygen, sulfur, oxygen is generally a little bit less than 120. You don't need to know its exact number, but it might be more like 119 or 118. So generally we say a little bit less in this region. Whereas in the simulation, they're showing more of an idealized situation. So now let's come back to the notes. So let's fill in some things that we saw in the simulation. So for instance, if we draw the Lewis structure for carbon dioxide and we establish that its steric number is equal to 2, well then we can go ahead and determine its electronic and molecular geometries. Now you'll notice that I have this label type. So another way, in fact, of saying steric number equal to 2 is to say that this is an AX2 type of structure where A represents the central atom and X represents those atoms that are attached to that central atom. So there are two atoms, X and X. It doesn't matter what they are. They don't need to be the same thing. But more importantly, the X's are attached to A via chemical bonds, electron pairs, and those electron pairs repel one another. So I indicate the electronic geometry, 180 degrees, molecular geometry. That would also be 180 degrees, and both of these are referred to as linear. Now if we move to the next example, I refer to this as an AX3 type of structure and it's in the sense that there are three atoms surrounding a central atom. The geometry adopted here is trigonal planar. In this case all the atoms are the same but they don't need to be and the bond angle here I'd expect to be pretty close to 120. There's no reason why all of those angles can't be 120. Again, this has a steric number equal to 3 because we have three bonds around that central atom. In the next example, we have AX2E. So I, I really think of this as being an aspect of an AX3, except what we've done is we've taken one of the bonding pairs and made it into a lone pair. Now that lone pair still occupies a region of electron density. Therefore, we would still say that the electronic geometry equals trigonal planar. But the actual molecular geometry, just looking how the atoms themselves are arranged, we would say that would be bent. Note that I've indicated bond angle here as being slightly less than 120 degrees, and that is because the lone pairs tend to spread themselves out a little bit more and will repel the bonding pairs more than another bonding pair would. So this demonstrates the principle of using Lewis structures, steric numbers, Vesper theory to predict both electronic and molecular geometries.